everybody, it's Talia and this is Harvey and today we wanted to talk to you about 10 bogus baby buys. Things that you don't need to spend your money on that the general population uh, tends to tell you that you absolutely need when you have a baby. So this is mostly designed for kids under one. Just a couple qualifiers. This is all my opinion and I do tend to be a little odd and I'm more of a philosophy that less is more as a mom. Oh, are you doing your pose? That's his pose. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so cute. You're such a distraction. I love it. Oh, let's just get right to it. What are the top 10 bogus baby buys? Things that everyone tells you you need and turns out you don't. And you're really probably just going to stress yourself out, clutter your house, and take up more space with it. Uh, so item number one, and this might blow your mind, but it's a diaper bag. I really don't think that you need a diaper bag as a mom because, and here's my qualifier, I think that what you can do as a mom that would make the most sense, and at least this is what made the most sense for me, is buying an extra large purse and just using that. Because I was trying to tote around a diaper bag and a purse and it was really bugging me. And the way that most diaper bags are designed, if you put your cell phone or your wallet and you try to use your diaper bag as your purse, things just fall out and mess up. Now, the diaper bags that look more like purses and you could use more like a purse are incredibly expensive and they're hundreds of dollars. So if you just go to the store and you buy just a large purse and it can be real cheap material and, and you can still make it cute, almost kind of like a beach tote, um, that's designed to be a purse, it will then double better as a diaper bag. And again, I'm the type of mom that I don't carry around the whole Buckingham Palace for my child wherever we go. I make sure that he's got at least two diapers and some wipes and uh, maybe a little bag of crackers and some water and then a change of clothes. And the change of clothes is literally just like a onesie because it's small. I'm not bringing like a whole outfit or anything like that. And I'm not bringing toys and I'm not bringing rattles and books and all these other things. It's just the bare minimum, just what I need. Item number two is toys. For a child that is under a year old, you do not need to buy any toys. First off, people will just inevitably give you toys, most likely. If they hear you're having a baby, they'll bring over a stuffed animal or a rattle or whatever, and that's fine and that's great. And I've actually used uh, some of the toys that other people have bought me. But when people you know, make jokes like, oh, you know, I bought my kid this expensive present and they only played with the box, it's true. They only care about the box, about the packaging. Babies from, you know, at least from one and under, they don't need toys. They don't need fancy, expensive things. And all it does is clutter up your house, cause tripping hazards everywhere. It really gets to be expensive after a while and really clutters the house. So it's not necessary. Harvey's favorite toy has always been a water bottle half full of water and he shakes it and he thinks it's super awesome and if you want to get creative you can get water bottles and put glitter in there or colored water and then love it even more. But the third is when women feel like they need five different kinds of strollers. One when they're an infant and when the car seat locks in and then a jogging stroller and then a lightweight compactable stroller when they're going here. That Anyway, it just gets to be such a mess and then one when they're older and blah 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 blah. I you only need one stroller and how I've found that I've been able to do that is I've just bought a jogging stroller. You can use a jogging stroller on dirt and on concrete but you can't use the small wheeled, you know, normal strollers on concrete and dirt. I bought the stroller that I would be able to use not only from when Harvey was an infant but um, up until he's, you know, four or five years old. And overwhelmingly, the majority of the time, jogging strollers will also be built so that you can click a car seat right in. So I would recommend finding just a jogging stroller that you can click your car seat in and then you're able to take it anywhere with no restrictions and you really only need one stroller. And I do like to baby carry most of the time anyway, so I end up having a harness with my baby because I don't like to lug around a stroller. But the one stroller I do have, the jogging stroller, has been great and I have never needed another kind of stroller. So don't spend a lot of money on a million different types of strollers and those take up so much space and are so expensive so you just don't need it forget, forget about it okay uh, another one shoes a baby under one does not need shoes and doctors are now even realizing that as children are developing and learning how to stand and be mobile that their feet will actually develop better and get the muscle strength that it needs to if they're not in shoes. So don't spend a bunch of money on shoes that they're going to outgrow. I mean, yes, they look cute, but they don't need it. So don't worry also about your baby's feet getting cold, just buy socks. And that leads us into the next uh, bogus baby buy, which are multicolored socks. 
right? Because I totally fell into the trap of, oh my gosh, these socks are so cute, and these socks are cute, and these socks are cute. If you thought that you had a hard time not losing socks in the dryer, just try a baby sock. You're gonna lose the other pair, if not both pairs. I've lost so many socks, I can't even count. And I have like one orange sock with an alligator on it, and then you know a blue sock with an owl on it, and I'm like, oh, and then it looks really stupid just by a whole giant like Costco pack of white baby socks that are super stretchy that you can use from like zero to 12 months, and that's all you're gonna need. And although it's tempting, just don't do it, you're going to pull your hair out in frustration and you're going to lose tons of money. So no cute socks, I know it's hard. And maybe a couple cute socks here and there on the side, but overwhelmingly you're just going to want to buy the white plain Jane socks. Next, uh, kind of following the lines of clothing, are hats that do not have straps. Because yes, there are so many cute hats out there, and for a while, when your child is really young, they will allow you to leave a hat on their head because they don't have the coordination to take it off. But, as soon as your child learns how to take that hat off, they will take it off the second you put it on. The cute hat goes on that they've worn for weeks at a time, and oh, they've been so happy with it. Boom, off and on the ground. Put the hat on, off and on the ground. You're going to lose hats like nobody's business if they do not have the Velcro straps. So get your child used to, from the beginning, always having a hat with a Velcro strap. One day they won't know how to take off their hat, and the next day they'll be a pro at it. So just get them in the habit of not being able to take off the hat, and after a while they'll give up because, oh, the hat always stays on because the strap is there, and they never got into the habit of being able to take it off. Another item that is a bogus baby buy is the baby food maker. You do not need a baby food maker. I know a lot of moms don't even attempt making their own homemade baby food, but I do highly recommend it. However, you don't need a lot of gimmicks with it. A blender or a food processor will work just as good if not better, and then you're not going to need a million gadgets in your kitchen. So don't worry about buying a special baby food maker. It is just a ploy to get your money. Ugh, corporate America. Also on the list are teething rings. Maybe this is just me, but my child chews on anything, right? I mean, anything and things he's not supposed to chew on. Oh, like an electrical cord. This looks delicious. And he chews on it. But as soon as I stick a teething ring in front of him, he tosses it and he could care less about it because you put those teething rings, like you're supposed to put them in the fridge. Like it cools it down and it helps when your kids are teething and they have those sore puffy gums. It helps to relieve the pain. So babies don't know that though and they don't like the cold and it doesn't really do a whole lot of good if it's not cold. So you just don't need it. They'll find other things to chew on. So teething rings mm, hasn't really worked for me that I may be a minority and maybe teething rings work great for other kids but not for mine he could care less so don't need to spend money on teething rings now ninth on the list is baby DVDs you do not need baby DVDs at least some doctors have posted this and I really buy into this idea that a child does not need to be stimulated by TV it's not really beneficial for a child under one to learn to sit in front of a TV and although it'd be very helpful for you as a mom to be freed up if you could just put your kid down and plop him down in front of a screen and let him watch a movie uh, their attention span doesn't last that long, but you really shouldn't get them into the habit of that. It's not interactive, it doesn't really teach them good skills. So, your child really should just learn to play by themselves, which is a really healthy, good skill to build. Learn how to healthily interact with other kids and with you. So, don't get your kid in the habit at this young age of sitting them down in front of the TV. Baby Einstein, I just don't buy it. Last on the list, it's a little non-specific, don't buy anything bigger than this. Just don't do it. <laughs> Don't buy anything bigger than this. It's obviously not essential. I mean, you'll need a car seat, you'll need a crib, uh, things like that. For the most part, if it's a big ticket item, really stop and think about it and be like, is this necessary? Do I have to have this? There could be a better option out there. Kid corrals that they sell that are just gigantic and expensive and then monopolize your whole living room. You can actually just go out and buy like a inflatable pool and just, you know, blow up the rings and let your kids play in an inflatable pool and that takes up a nice large space. It's really safe, it's soft if they fall over. And then when you have company coming or, you know, after your kid goes to bed, you can let the air out and put it away and it's not taking up all that space and it's cheap and it's being creative. Or those walking assister things where you put your baby in and there's wheels and they learn to walk. Not necessary. Harvey learned how to walk using the yoga ball. He would stand up and hold on to the yoga ball and slowly go forward and learn to roll with it. 
I'm totally aware that many of you might have complete opposite opinions, or maybe you even have other items that you'd like to add to this list that you're shocked I didn't put in. So please feel free to comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to reading your comments. All right, thanks. Bye.